Welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. What's up? Whenever you're watching this, I'm so glad to be talking to you again today. I just want to welcome you to Crew, Christians Rising Up Youth Ministries here at the Kingdom Church. I want to say hello to our fabulous, some of our fabulous females, uh, Wilberlene, Emanuela, Kiera. I just want to say hi to a couple of y'all. Just want to kind of shout out, do some shout outs to start us off here. Some of our uh, manly men, like Bari, Jeremiah, Zach. Hey y'all, what's up? Good to see you. Just want to give you some shout out, let you know that we love you and we care and that we want to hear from you. So if you haven't heard from Nate or Samson or Jeremiah, or if you haven't heard from Shakara, Belinda or Miss Sandra, uh, then reach out to us, give us a call back. We probably left a voicemail. Um, so text us if you see us a number that you probably don't recognize, just text and then we'll get back with you because we want to connect with you. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer and uh, we'll get started with this week's lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for today and the opportunity to learn more about you, God. We thank you, God, that our hearts are open to what you have to say to us, God. Help us to have our ears open, God, to what you have to say. Help us to listen to that still, small voice, God, so that we can receive and that we can change and that we can become more and more like you. Better persons, God, in our homes, in our families, in our neighborhoods, God, in our church, wherever we go, God, may we represent you in the fullness. We thank you and we praise you. Forgive us now for anything we've done wrong. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I know I've told some of you this story before, but just bear with me for like the next 30 seconds. But when I was in middle school, um, I had a female that, um, when I was in eighth grade actually, she decided that um, I was the one that was talking about her behind her back. And so I got called to the office one day and they were like, Yvetta, we need you to stop talking about her. And I was like, I have not talked to her since sixth grade. Um, but whatever, I, since I don't already talk to her, I don't talk about her, that's no problem. I got you, I'm good. They let me go. And so about as soon as I got out of the door, um, she was there and I was making my way to the bus and she came up to me and she approached me and she said, I'm gonna fight you because I heard you've been talking about me. And I was like, mm, no, I haven't, but you know, it's whatever. And so she, was, she kept on talking and running her mouth and she was, and I'm like, well, what's her hesitation? And then she says, I'm just waiting for my girls to come so we can all jump you. And I was like, wow, this is like, she really, really upset and I have no idea why, right? And so I'm standing there and she's like, my girl's coming out. And so these two girls were approaching from behind me. And so I was just like, I really don't know what your beef is with me. You know, that's what we used to say back in the day. Um, but I'm cool with you, like, but it's whatever, right? So I'm waiting for these girls to come up and the girls come up and she's like, these are my girls and it's about to go down. And so before I can fully turn around, I heard, oh, you want to fight her? my cousin and when i turned around i saw my cousin who literally lives less than a mile away from me and my cousin was like oh no we're not gonna fight her we about to jump you and i was like oh my goodness the two girls that she called that would fight anybody and everybody on campus was my cousin and my cousin's best friend so my cousin it was like Yvetta, get on the bus and i was like bye bye uh <laughs> and i got on the bus and I think about, about this, and this girl really just had it out for me. She wanted to pay me back for something that I did to her maybe in sixth grade, seventh grade. I didn't even know what it was, but she made this whole story that I was talking about her so she could pay me back, so she could fight me. The thing about it that also sticks out to me about that story is my cousin did that for me. I'm not really sure what all she did. Um, I just got on the bus and left and went home. But when my cousin did that for me, that was something that I couldn't pay back my cousin for. My cousin wouldn't allow me to fight. She wouldn't let me get in trouble. And some of you know, I used to make straight A's in middle school. So I was kind of like the nerd. So I wasn't a fighter back then. <laughs> like I, you know, I stood up for myself, but I wasn't a fighter. And so that wasn't something that could ever really pay my cousin back. I never got in an instance where I had to fight for my cousin. So I was never really able to pay her back with that. It's kind of like uh, payback too. Sometimes, sometimes people will maybe buy you lunch, and because you don't have the money, you don't have a, even a way to pay them back, and they just do it because they love you and because they want something for you. So sometimes in life, payback is because uh, somebody wants to get back at somebody, and sometimes it's because somebody owes them money. 
So we're gonna jump back into Joseph's story again this week. It, this is our series, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about payback. We're gonna kind of dive a little bit into the end, near the end of Joseph's story. Um, but think about when people want payback, how, what they really want. How do they really wanna make people feel? Um, the hurt that they feel, the pain that they feel the place that they are. A lot of times when people want payback, they want to be, uh, want that person to feel just as embarrassed as they felt. Um, that's usually the first reaction is to get even, to want something in return. Um, even if it's like low key payback, it's that shady comment on social media, it's that snide remark, it's that meme that addresses the issue but doesn't directly address the issue. Um, all of that is payback. Um, and sometimes it seems the closer we are to a person, the more we want the payback. Sometimes we want the payback for our siblings and right away. I grew up with uh, four other siblings. So there were plenty of times where things were done to me that I felt like were unfair, that I felt like I needed payback. There were times where I did. Either I was a quick hit back, um, or it was a lot of times with me and my mouth. I would say something, I would, clap that real fast and um, I got pretty good at it but God has saved me right now and he is still delivering me bless the Lord pray my strength in the Lord for that um, so let's get back to what we're talking about here uh, the people who are closest to you and the people you know best have the most potential to hurt you that's always true um, you love them the most and of course they they unfortunately have the most potential to hurt you so they're most likely to be on the top of your list of people who you owe pay payback. And there are different ways that we pay back. It's usually three main ways. The public payback, where again, we clap back loudly. Um, we say something and then we say, oh, just kidding. But we know we really mean it. There's a passive playback where we just do a subtle post on social media or we just ignore them, ignore their text messages, you know, because they made you mad, they said something wrong, and so we just passively pay them back by ignoring them. There's an imaginary payback. That's where in your mind you tell them everything that you want to tell them and how you want to tell them, when you want to tell them, and um, yeah, they never know. But behind your smile, there's a whole nother conversation that's going on. But most satisfying payback usually though is watching someone fail. Mm-hmm. You cheated on him, he cheated on you. Yeah, you got yours. You got what's coming for you. We want something to go wrong. Your mom um, yells at you for something and then she feels real bad and so now she's crying and like, well, you deserve to cry. You shouldn't have yelled at me. I told you I didn't do that. That kind of just wanting people to fail. Um, so in those moments, it feels like justice. Hmm. It feels good when you see something come to someone uh, whether it's good or it's bad. And that's exactly the situation that Joseph found himself in. Now, in case you haven't watched the other videos, which you really should go back and do, um, let me just kind of bring you up to speed here. Uh, Cause Joseph's story has been a wild one. Joseph again was born into a, a huge family. Um, he had 10 brothers when he was born already. His father chose Joseph as his favorite child. And with that, he gave him the favorite things Everything that Joseph wanted, he had. He gave him the coat of many colors, which meant that he was the best son and he was the highly favored son. And so his brothers hated him. And Joseph had these dreams. So his Joseph's dreams included his brothers, basically his brothers bowing down to him. And then he had another dream that said that his, not only would his brothers bow down to him, but his parents, their parents would bow down to him. So because of these dreams, and because of his consistent favoritism from their father, his brothers got to the point where they hated him so bad they wanted to kill him. And instead of killing him, um, they sold him off to slavery. So they sold him off to slavery in, in Egypt, and if life wasn't bad enough with that, once he got there, he was a slave and he worked in someone else's house, and then he was accused of trying to rape that person's wife, and so he was put in prison. So his brothers wanted to kill him, he was sold off to slavery. He was accused of a crime he, he did not commit. He was placed in prison for that crime. And then when he was in prison, he helped other people interpret their dreams and they promised to get him out when they got out. 
and they forgot about him for two years. And then finally, um, he was able to interpret the Pharaoh's dream. Um, and he got out and he actually was made ruler over Egypt. He was second in command after Pharaoh. He was made ruler. And one of his dreams pretty much said that there would be a time of famine and there would be a time of plenty. And so when they, he interpret that dream for him, then um, Pharaoh said, wow, since you know this, you must be the guy for us to lead us and to orchestrate us during this time of plenty and during this time of famine. So what happened was during the time of plenty, Joseph orchestrated and he had people save back food and build where they could have for when it came in time of famine with no food. So they did that. So now we're pretty much up to Genesis chapter 45. So if you want to grab your Bibles or turn to your Bible app, I'll give you a second to do that. Genesis is the first book of the Bible, as you know, and we're in chapter 45. We're going to start at the first verse, and I'll be reading from the New International Version, the NIV Version. We get to the point, and, and I, I would highly suggest also that you go back and read chapters 42 to 50 because it's a really good um, explanation. It's even more drama in that. Let me kind of bring you up to speed in 60 seconds. So what happened is there's a time of famine, and so there's famine all over the land, not just Egypt, but the famine is so far reaching that it reaches where Joseph's family was. So Joseph's family were in famine. And so because Egypt had already prepared all this food for when they went into famine, Jacob sent his brothers into Egypt and said, hey man, go find us some food. And so they go into Egypt. And by this time, like I said, Joseph had been um, as second in command in Egypt for years now. So he no longer had that slave clothes on. He no longer had that coat of robe of many colors. Now he looked like an Egyptian. He acted like an Egyptian and for, you know, for good purposes, he pretty much was an Egyptian. So when they came into the land and they went to go ask for food, they had to go to who else but Joseph. So Joseph recognized them immediately. I mean, these were his brothers. He knew what they looked like. It was 10 of them. And they did not recognize Joseph. Joseph looked like an Egyptian, talked like an Egyptian, and it made sense. They sold off their brother to slavery. Why would he be in Egypt and why would he be the ruler? They had forgotten all about the dreams that Joseph had. They just thought, we gotta ask this Egyptian for food because our family could die. So in verse um, one here, let's start. It says, then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants and he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. So we're coming into the scripture here where Joseph had done a couple of things. He had them go back and forth and ask for their little brother. Like I said, you got to read it. It's, it's like shocking how much stuff that Joseph pissed them through just to kind of see where they were. So in this point, he's in the presence with his 10 brothers and he says, everybody out. All the servants, all the people that was like under his control and under his rule, he said, all of y'all out, get out of our presence. So there was no one with Joseph and he made himself known to his brothers. I can imagine him like maybe taking off his like uh, Egyptian robe or his his kind of priestly or kingly kind of things. Maybe he took off his ring. Maybe he took off a wig or something if he was wearing it so they could kind of recognize him. And he says he made himself known and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. Man, he like cried out like and when and Pharaoh's household heard about it, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. They thinking like, this brother about to get back at us for real. But you can hear Joseph's heart. He was like, hey, it's me. Where's our dad, you know? I can imagine the tension and emotion. He was face to face with the people that he could have said, oh, payback's coming. He could have said, oh, y'all hungry? You hungry? I was hungry too when you sold me off to slavery. He could have thought of so many things that he could have done. Matter of fact, again, he was second in command in all of Egypt. He could have said, y'all take them out and take care of them. All 10 of them. It wouldn't have been nothing for him to snap his finger like Thanos and they were all gone. But he didn't do that. He said, it's me. He said, let me be my brothers. He cried out with so much joy that the, everyone in the house heard him. And so that's where we are now. He didn't um, have all that kind of payback spirit. He had a peaceful spirit. 
What would you do? I mean, think about it. Somebody, your family sold you off. Your brother and sister sold you off to slavery. How would your reaction be towards them? Think about some things that's happened in your house recently that has not been in your favor, that has been against you with either your siblings or your friends, and what was your reaction to it? Was it payback or was it peace? Is there something that you could have done differently? I think about many things in my life, I'm not sure if I would have done it like Joseph. We can only like try to be better people. So as the story continues, Joseph asks his brothers to walk over close to him and stand with him. Um, and in verse four here, it says, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold to Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for, yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So God has saved Joseph's life to save his whole family's lives. Joseph had come to a place of peace in these years he's been away from his brothers. He had come to a place of forgiveness in this time the way that he had been away from his brothers. He had come to a place of peace and forgiveness. Now for him, he had years between the time where he saw his brothers. For you, you don't want it to be that long. If there's someone that's done you wrong, you need to come to a place of peace and forgiveness, hopefully a lot sooner, and preferably while they're still alive. As if we've learned nothing from this COVID experience, we never know how long we have, we each all have. The Bible even says that tomorrow is not promised for us. So keep this in mind as we kind of wrap this up here. He acknowledged their wrong and his hurt without creating more hurt. He wasn't about that payback. He was about the healing, the, the forgiveness, the peace in their family. Eventually, he went on to tell his brothers to bring their whole family. He brought their whole family to Egypt. And even through the famine, their family was saved. In verse 15, it says, and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterwards, his brothers talked with him. It was like a family reunion. It was like everything was back closer together. And maybe this is something that you need to do in your house. Maybe you need to show the love of God in your house and come into a place where you can talk again to your family. Talk about whatever, talk about their day, talk about their likes, the dislikes, the dream vacations, talk about future plans. Come to a place in your family where there's peace, where there's forgiveness, where there's not payback. When you don't know what to do, pursue peace instead of payback. Pursue peace instead of payback. You can't do both. You can't do both. He was able to forgive, but he was really only able to forgive with the help of God. And so it takes the help of God um, to lay down your right to have payback. It takes the help of God to not want to go after revenge. It takes the help of God to not have a desire to get even, even with someone, um, do eye for eye, like they say, um, and it actually takes a daily work. Forgiveness is not a one-time thing. Oh, I forgive you, we moving on. No, a lot of times you have to forgive somebody over and over again, maybe for even the same thing, because it takes a daily work. We're daily moving towards perfection, and it's possible. It's possible to have peace with them, and it's possible to have peace in you, because it's really not about them at the end of the day. It's about you and where you'll have the peace. So let's get ready to pray. Um, think about who do you need to forgive? What offense do you need to bring to someone, to God? Not even bringing it to that person, oh, you hurt me. Bring it to God. God, they hurt me. God, I'm hurting really badly about this. God, help me to forgive. Because God wants to do incredible things in your story, like he did incredible things in Joseph's story by saving his whole family. But if you can't forgive and have peace inside, then that kind of hinders what God can do in your life. And he has amazing things planned for your life. So when you don't know what to do, pursue peace instead of payback. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this lesson today. We thank you, God, that with your power, the Holy Spirit, we can pursue peace instead of payback. 
We thank you, God, that your word says that vengeance is the Lord's, which means that, God, we can bring our hurts to you. We can bring our pains to you. We can bring our struggles to you, God, and that you have our back, God. You will fight our battles like Exodus 14 and 14 say, God. So when we're going through situations, we will quote your word, God. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for me. I need only to be still, God. So help us to get in a still place of forgiveness, a still place of peace, God, and not a payback, God, so that you can fight for us, God. Thank you, God, for fighting our battles. Thank you, God, for saving me that day in middle school from being jumped by three girls. And thank you, God, for saving all of our young people, God, today, right now. God, help us to forgive. Help us to pursue peace instead of payback. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you. We care for you. We'll talk to you later.